Good evening. Welcome to tonight's Bible study, Who Started Your Church? If you are a believer at the Vineyard Christian Fellowship, your denomination was started by Ken Gullickson and Keith Green in Santa Monica, California in 1974. If you are a member of Calvary Chapel, Chuck Smith began your congregation in Costa Mesa in 1965. If you are a follower of the Church of Scientology, your group owes its origin to L. Ron Hubbard in Washington, D.C. in 1952. If you are a worshiper at the Inglesia Ni Cristo, Felix Manolo instituted your sect in the Philippines in 1914. If you are a disciple of the Assemblies of God or other splinter Pentecostal groups, your religion is one of the hundreds of new sects founded by men during the 20th century. If you are a Christian scientist, your organization was brought into existence by Miss Mary Baker Eddy in 1879. If you are a Jehovah's Witness, your church was established by Charles Taze Russell in Pennsylvania in 1879. If you are a Seventh-day Adventist, your church was started by a, a woman named Miss Ellen Gould White in the United States in 1860. If you are a Mormon, Church of Latter-day Saints, your religion was started in New York by Joseph Smith in 1830. If you are a Methodist, your form of Protestantism traces its beginning to John Wesley in London in 1738. If you are a Baptist, you look to John Smith as the originator of your institution in Amsterdam in 1609. If you are a Presbyterian, John Calvin is credited with initiating your church in Switzer Switzerland excuse me, in 1555. If you are Anglican or Episcopalian, your religion dates back to King Henry VIII in England in 1533. King Henry broke away from the Catholic Church because he wanted to divorce his wife because she couldn't have children. And that's the basis of that church separating from the Catholic Church. Lutheran. Martin Luther started your beliefs in Germany in 1517. Um, that's how we have the word Protestant. He protested against the Catholic Church, against the Pope. So that's how we have the word Protestant. If you are a member of the Orthodox Church, Russian, Eastern, or Greek, your church went into schism in 1054. The good news is in our lifetime, relations are being restored between the Pope, Pope Francis at this time, and their patriarch, Bar Bartholomew. And recently, Pope Francis visited the Coptic Church in Egypt, which was started by St. Mark, and also um, these churches are reuniting after being divided for uh, many centuries. The Orthodox, Coptic, uh, churches are just about identical with the Catholic Church. We hold the same sacraments and many of the same doctrines. If you are a Roman Catholic, your church was founded in Jerusalem by Jesus Christ himself, who named Peter its first pope. And that happened in 33 AD. And to find where the Catholic Church was started in the Bible, uh, refer to Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, where Jesus says, Thou art Peter, translated to Kephas in Aramaic, which means a rock, and on this rock I will build my church, singular, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Whatever you bind, speaking to Peter, is bound on, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth 
is loosed in heaven. So Jesus gave the key or keys specifically to Peter to bind and loose. He gave his authority to Peter, who was the first pope. We can historically prove that the Catholic Church is the original church started by Jesus Christ. We just went over the dates of these other churches when they were started. So we know who started these denominations and when. We quote from Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, referring to Peter as the first pope, bishop of Rome. And what we can do is you can, you can do a Wikipedia search nowadays, and you can actually uh, type in chronology of the popes. And you can see every single pope, starting from Francis, our current pope, who is the 266th bishop of Rome. And you can trace all the popes prior to him all the way back from Benedict prior to Francis, John Paul II, going all the way up 2,000 years, all the way up to Peter. Remarkably, um, the gravesite of St. Peter is said to be under the altar at the Vatican. So actually, there are steps that go underneath the altar at the Vatican where uh, Peter's remains, archaeology has uh, dug up his tomb, and actually he's buried underneath the altar at the Vatican. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit later in the next segment. Is we're going to uh, tonight we'll focus on baptism, infant baptism, as opposed to um, Calvary Chapel, who instead of uh, baptizing infants, dedicates infants. So before we get into that segment, I just want to give you a little bit of background on my research on Calvary Chapel. Um, Calvary Chapel was started in 1965 by Chuck Smith. Um, Chuck Smith had come up with a, wrote, wrote a couple of books. Um, one is called Future Survival, and the other book is called End Times. Chuck Smith, um, on page 20 in the book Future Survival, actually attempted to predict the uh, return of Jesus Christ. And in his book, I'll read you a couple quotations from Chuck Smith's book on page 20 in the book Future Survival. Um, quote, from my understanding of biblical prophecies, I'm quoting Chuck Smith, I am convinced that the Lord is coming for his church before the end of 1981. I could be wrong, but it's a deep conviction in my heart and all my plans are predicated upon that belief. On page 21 in the same book, Future Survival, quote, the Lord said that towards the end of the tribulation period, the sun would scorch men who dwell upon the face of the earth. The year 1986 would fit just about right. Uh, Deuteronomy, open your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 18 and go to verse 20. We're going to see how the Bible warns against somebody that falsely prophesies. So go to Deuteronomy. Chapter 18. And we're going to read from verse 20. Okay, so Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 20 through 21. Here it is. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. If you say to yourselves, how can we recognize an oracle which the Lord has spoken? Know that even though a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if his oracle is not fulfilled or verified, it is an oracle which the Lord did not speak. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously, and you shall have no fear of him. It's an ancient biblical warning about somebody that falsely prophesies. In Chuck Smith's book, End Times, on page 35, here's another quote from Chuck Smith. I believe that the generation of 1948 is the last generation. Since a generation of judgment is 40 years and the tribulation period lasts seven years, 
I believe the Lord could come back for his church any time before the tribulation starts, which would mean any time before 1981. He has a little mathematical calculation. The year 1948 plus 40 minus 7 equals 1981. Lots of people were with Chuck Smith on that final midnight New Year's Eve at the end of 1981 who went home disappointed. And it goes on to say in this article that um, some people were really upset when the Lord didn't, didn't return um, on that date. So originally it was predict he predicted May of 1981, didn't happen. He extended the date to December 31st, 1981. Why is this re relevant? Well, in the next section, we're going to talk about baptism. And we're going to talk about infant baptism and what the church, Catholic Church teaches. So what I want to just touch base on is the credibility of Calvary Chapel's doctrine when it relates to baptism or infant baptism. So we're going to touch base on that in the next section or session coming up. Stay tuned.